Hey, what's up? This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of thecreditpairshop.com. And in today's video, we're going to talk about garnishment exemptions. Get a lot of questions about people saying that they're got, they have debt collectors coming after them. They're suing them. They're afraid that they're going to take their money. They have, they have limited income. They're wondering what are the solutions that they can have to try to deal with that debt collector so they can get, you know, get them off of their back. Now, first, understanding where your situation is. If you're working a job, then your best, uh, the best thing that you need to do is you need to validate that debt if it's with a third party debt collector. And then you need to, if they can't validate the debt, show you the claimed amount, how they came up with that dollar amount, then your next step is to make them, you know, you say, hey, you need to cease collections. And they will usually do that. They just don't, they, what they expect you to do is just to uh, deny the debt or run from the debt. So that's why it gets into the situation where people have gotten sued and they ended up uh, having a, a issue with a potential garnishment. So understanding your situation, I'm going to get to in a second how you can deal with it if you are be if you potentially are about to be garnished. I'm going to talk about the exemptions that are available for people. A lot of people are still unaware of this. I, I see uh, clients come to us all the time, or people YouTube, and they're like, "I'm I'm about to get garnished," and I'm and I ask them these uh, these questions about exemptions that people still just don't know too much about it. So. If you're not on this exemption list, then you do have to deal with the debt. But the first thing is you gotta be aware of where the debt is coming from. If it's still with the original creditor and you're a working, able-bodied person, then you need to get right with that uh, original creditor and try to work out a solution. If it is with a third-party debt collector, then you have a right to do what's called a debt validation or they might say debt verification. The type that we do, the type that I teach people to do, the type that we do for people that come and are clients with our company, is our debt validation is making them prove the claimed amount. They can't just walk up to you and say, you owe $2,000. How did you get to the $2,000? I want to get all of the documentation to review how you got to $2,000, because I don't recall that amount when I was dealing with the original creditor. That is not running from the debt. That is asking a debt collector who has paid pennies on the dollar for that debt to give me the appropriate paperwork to prove that I have to pay you the $2,000. So I don't wanna hear any people that are saying that I'm trying to tell people to run away from debt. So now let's get to if you meet the criteria to be exempt from being garnished. So if you were sued by a debt collector, you were sued by an original creditor, and your situation is dire, you just do, do not have the money, uh, you, you fall into one of these categories that I'm about to go through right here, you do not have to worry about being garnished, but you do have to notify them. So many people, so many people that run into this situation where they're being garnished, and they, you know, we get their documentation and we do a simple lookup for their state. Or if they come into our office and we're like, you cannot, you don't even qualify to be garnished. But the reason why people get into that situation is because they run from the problem. Rather than facing the problem and confronting the problem, they run from the problem. When you confront, confront the problem, then you see the solutions. So this is the process. Stop running. Confront options. Stop running from the problem. Confront the problem and you'll see the options. Because when you're running, you're out of breath. When you're looking at the situation for what it is, your mind can open up and you will see that there are solutions. So if you're being sued, you got a garnishment. They're coming at you. They already got the default judgment. The time frame has passed for you to be able to reopen it. There's a, no violations happen when they got the uh, the uh, judgment where they, you know, proof of service. 
You know, they did all of that stuff. There's just no way to get it reopened. There, there is a point that that does happen. So what you need to do immediately, and it, this is also something that you could do even when they are suing you. I made a video years ago. Uh, some of you probably saw it. I was working out in my in my gym, and I said that I told a uh, young lady on YouTube that was getting sued. I said, "What is your situation?" She said that I'm on disability. I'm not working. I, you know, I just don't have the money to pay this. And I said, "Your own disability? Can you prove your own disability?" She said, "Yes." I said. Call and notify them about your situation. And guess what she did? She called and notified them. And they said that they were going to dismiss the case. Now, understanding that we are a company and that we deal with this type of stuff every day for since 2006. And I actually dealt with this type of situation personally in the 90s. So I know how dirty debt collectors can be. So I said, you have to make sure you go to court. Also, regardless if they tell you, unless they give you a document showing that it's dismissed, you go to court because this is what they did. They tried to pull a fast one. Yes, they cannot uh, they, they cannot get the garnishment because of her situation. They were not going to be able to take any money. But what they were going to do is that they were not going to dismiss the case. They were going to get a default judgment because she didn't show there. And then they would probably try to look at different ways to try to get the money or hope that she maybe won the lottery or came in the money in the future. So regardless of if you call them, well, you, I'm telling you my direction, you call them. Tell them your situation. Your situation is that uh, you're disabled on SSI, Medicaid, SSDI, that you're only getting child support or alimony, that you're retired or you're a veteran, or you're in, you know, that money that uh, you had your earned income tax credit, that was where that your money uh, came from. They cannot garnish any of those. So for that example, she called, told, her, told him that she was on SSI, disability income, had no other income, they said that they were going to dismiss it. I said, you still show up to court. When she showed up to court, they called her name. The attorney for the plaintiff looked around, and when they saw that she stood up, they said dismiss. That's because what they're going to do is that they they don't want you to show up. They, uh, they want to pull a fast one on you. So, uh, and also she had stated, which this is a little bit off uh, – from where I wanted to make with the video, but it's important, is that she had stated that a lot of people that were there were in her same situation, but they just did not know what to do. They just did not know what to do. Like, these are like little solutions. Sometimes people, they will watch my video and they will be like, Steve, what's the solution? I just told you the solution. Like, this is what's, this, this is things that you could just simply make a call, but some people are afraid to even make that call. So all you got to do is if you have a garnishment, so I'm going to walk through these here, if you have a garnishment, that they've got the lawsuit, they, you know, there's nothing that you can do to get it reopened, it's past the time frame, and they're, now they're uh, seeking to garnish your wages, all you got to do is call and notify them that you're on any of these SSI benefits, SSDI, Medicaid, child support, alimony, retirement veterans, earned income tax credit, that if you're on any of these, and your state may have other available options. So now let's talk about the available options that are in my state of Wisconsin. In my state of Wisconsin, even if you're not, uh, ex don't have any of these exemptions, there is one other exemption that is uh, available to individuals. Now, I want to be clear because I don't want people to think that I'm telling people to run from debt. I'm not telling people to not pay your bills and pay your debt. What I'm saying is that you need to have, you know, comfort with your situation because if you cannot be comfortable and then start working on paying your debt, it's not, the foundation is going to crumble. The family is going to crumble. 
Everything's just going to go downhill. We see that all the time. So in Wisconsin, and I believe that the people who put this together in Wisconsin had this thought process. In Wisconsin, they have what's called a poverty guideline. That's what they call it here for garnishment. In your state, they might have some type of income level protection. Some states have it, some states don't. Basically, what it is is they say, well, if you have this many dependents, including yourself, and you don't earn this amount of money every bi weekly, biweekly, or monthly with a salary, that you cannot be garnished. It has to be over that amount. So if it's $1 over that amount, that company can get that $1. More than likely, they're not going to go through doing that, but they're going to get that $1. So, but a lot of people are not aware of that. So you can have people that have like, you know, four dependents and they're barely making like 2,500 bucks a month. Uh, but I'm not sure. I should have had the uh, document. Hold on one second. Forgive me. You can hear my voice. I'm just right over to one of my uh, desks over here. You still hear my voice. I don't have the document. I tell my employees to keep it on this desk that's right over here by where I do the videos, but I guess they may have maybe used it. But basically, there's an, a dollar amount that you're able to make before you could qualify to be garnished. So that, so you don't have any of these, and this is in the state of Wisconsin, your state may be different, that there is um, these regular exemptions that are basically federal exemptions. There's some other state ones that might be for your state, but then your state may also, like my state, has an income uh, exemption. If you're below a certain income with a certain amount of dependents or just below a certain income, you cannot be garnished. You just cannot be garnished. And But that still does not say that you don't have to pay the debt. It's just giving you relief without having to take, you know, go to bankruptcy or something like that. And then what I tell people to do is to get your household under control figure out some ways to make extra money and then approach them about doing some type of plan because we, you know, you want to pay, pay your debts. That's, that's, uh, that's what we would uh, tell people to do. And then the next thing that I see a lot of people disregard, and you could, this is something that you could do right now. Most debt collectors or original creditors who are actively have a garnishment in place, like your, it's coming out of your paycheck every week. Did you know that you can actually negotiate on that? That you can actually call them and say, hey, I cannot pay $100 a week. It's killing me. I need to have that readjusted. Did you know that they have to listen to you and that they will make those concessions? Because the number one thing in their mind, in, in which I just talked about, is the foundation. If your foundation crumbles, the payment crumbles. So we, you have a lot of power inside of your hands. You just got to know how to direct it. This is something that actually happened to me when I went through my financial issues in 1994 is that I started to find I have a lot of power in my hands on getting rid of these debts. And that if I get my foundation together and then I went and looked at those debts and my problems directly instead of running from them, that all of these options and solutions would come available and then I was able to do take care of that one, take care of this one. And all of a sudden, you know, a number of years later, my whole situation had changed. But really, during the process, the situation changed because you start to feel that power that you took back. So, yeah, it may take some time to deal with the debt. But the instantly is your power. You get your power back because you confronted and did something that you were afraid to do that you maybe spent many months or many years running from. So to review the garnishment exemptions, we're talking about, to be clear, we're talking about if they already have a, gar a garnishment order, there is no way that you can reopen the case. There was no violations when they got it that the this is your solution right now that you can look at. Is that, and you should look at this even before that when they're suing you, if you have these uh, garnishment exemptions, is 
SSI benefits, SSDI, Medicaid, child support, alimony, retirement, veterans, earned income. Also, look up in your state. You may have other exemptions that are available to you. And even if they're suing you right now and you, are, you qualify for these, you need to call them up right away and tell them about your financial situation. Tell them the way that you earn money and that there's no other options. If they choose to dismiss the case, you still should show up to court because they're going to claim to get a default judgment if you don't show up. Now, if they give you a document saying that it is dismissed, then don't worry about it. You're, you're good to go. In my state of Wisconsin, check in your state. We have what's called poverty guidelines to where it, depending on how many dependents you have and how much money you earn weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, you may not qualify to be garnished, but that does not do away with the debt. Also, with these here, that does not do away with the debt. They might choose to do a 1099-C when you fall into this category because there's really no way that they're going to get the money. On this side here, they will more than likely not do a 1099-C right away unless they believe that there's just going to be no way that your income will increase. But if you uh, fall within, they call it a poverty guideline worksheet in the state of Wisconsin, if you earn under a certain amount of money, you cannot be garnished. And they do that to be able to say we need to have a foundation on the people to be able to take care of the bare minimums and then later they could deal with that debt. And that's what I tell people to do is get that household foundation secured, rebuild it, make extra money in ways that you can. And I make videos on how you can come up with extra money with the money that you're already making. So not talking about delivering pizzas and, you know, doing all that other stuff. Uh, and then you start to figure out a solution to pay down that debt. That would be the option. And look in your state, your state, may have some type of similar option. And then the, the third option, if you don't, if your state doesn't have something like the poverty guideline, no exemptions, then every state has where there's a percentage of your income that can be garnished. You can always contact the uh, plaintiff attorney and say, I need to renegotiate that payment because it is tearing up my household. I, I'm not going to be able to continue doing this. I'm, it's going to put me into bankruptcy if I keep doing this. I can, instead of $100 a week, I can afford $50 a week. Will you take that? They will take that. You can renegotiate that. They will take that because they know that if your foundation crumbles, they're not going to get any of the money. Also, if you happen to save money, you can approach them and say, I know you're garnishing me, but hey, situation is not good. I owe you two thousand more dollars left on this. I can give you one thousand dollars if you just stop this. Can we negotiate that? They will more than likely take that because they know that anywhere down the line it takes months, thirty days at a time to get that hundred dollar payment, and they're gonna need to wait for two, for twenty months when they can go ahead and take that thousand dollars now, and that's like getting money that would have took ten months to get. And hey, yeah, we gave a discount, but. Potentially, we don't know what the future would hold for this individual, and they're already in a financial uh, situation to where it, it, you know, may, they may have other creditors that are coming after them. And then again, stop running, start focusing on the problem, so you can get your power back, and you will see those solutions. So, if you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video. What makes us different? So you can see my eight-point validation process my two-phase settlement process. If you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, your the number 3 scorescom Grab your TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, credit reports, and all three scores. If you have debt collectors coming after you, you can stop them early by using my state statute of limitations letter, cease and desist collection activities letter, and debt validation letter. The instructions are on the tops of those letters. Use the one that pertains to your situation. I do ask for a donation. I appreciate everyone that does that. It helps monetize my time here to make these videos to help you out. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel. Post your questions and comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder.